Hey everybody, this is West Point checking in. We're going to do another short, simple tutorial. And today we're going to do the dreaded ramp start. Ramp start's not hard. Um, you notice I even got in a brand new A10, so everything looks nice and pretty for the tutorial. Um, most servers that you get on, uh, you're going to get into an already uh, hot uh, ready to go aircraft uh, a lot of squadrons that you fly with you're going to get into one that looks just like this and has nothing set up for you also if you learn how to ramp start one uh, you learn the systems a whole lot better and you know what uh, to do to troubleshoot a lot of your systems so we're going to get right into a ramp start these are these don't take long and uh, you'll be up and ready to fly quicker than you think. So let's go first things first. Let's turn the battery power on and our inverter standby. And I'm going to go ahead and arm the uh, seat, the ejection seat, which I wouldn't normally do. But I want to show you where your APU start switch is at. And right here, we're going to start the APU, the auxiliary power unit. The APU is what starts your other engines and it also supplies power uh, initially on. So we're looking at our gauges and learn what your gauges are there for. This is the APU RPM. This is the APU temperature gauge. You notice how it was climbing a little bit and then it dropped back to around four. That's where it's gonna stabilize at. So the APU is up and running, and we want to go to our APU generator power. When we turn that on, you notice everything else comes online, because now we're supplying power uh, through the auxiliary power unit's generator. After we've done that, uh, it's time to go ahead and get our uh, left-hand engines pulling up. This is the stack of gauges for the left-hand engine and we're going to move the left hand throttle forward off the detent and when we watch our gauges you can see everything start to move and if you were to look back you're seeing the engines pull what we want to look for is we want to look for this uh, core rpm percentage to come past uh, the 30 percent uh, mark if it smoothly moves past it and continues to climb, you're going to have a good start. If it slows down and hangs up around 30%, you most likely have done something that's going to be uh, causing a problem for you. Now, I did this a little bit out of line or out of sequence, but as soon as I turn the APU generator on, I turn on my CDU and my IGGY. Uh, my embedded uh, GPS INS uh, alignment. Turning off the master caution light because all it's there for it's telling me that uh, I'm starting the aircraft and uh, as certain systems come online it's going to come on. Uh, uh, during the startup process you can pretty much ignore that. Uh, the APU has cooled back off and dropped to to down to the four where it was at before. So we're going to start the right hand engine now. Moving the throttle forward like we did before. We're going to watch uh, our gauges. Oil pressure is coming up, or RPM is coming up. We want to see if it moves past the 30% uh, mark. Uh, it looks like it's going to make it nice and smooth at that point. That's when I usually lock my throttle back together. And you notice your APU temp is up right now. That's just because uh, it's uh, starting the engine and it requires a little, little bit of effort, so it'll warm up. So let's go around and uh, we want to set our uh, stability augmentation system, uh, which keeps your planes uh, yaw and pitch um, controlled somewhat by the uh, computer. If 
you're ever flying around and bobbling all over the place, you look and your SAS switch has most likely gone off. You hit the button right below that, and you'll see takeoff trim come on. That just sets the trim for the level ground that you're sitting on. And we're going to turn on our kick you, our joint tactical radio system, and our integrated uh, flight and fire uh, control computer. You notice that it's yet to test, and you see this come on in uh, the DCS tutorials. Uh, faults in that aren't going to come on. Uh, they're not modeled in. I skip right past it unless there's something I need to do in there. Uncage your auxiliary ADI. Turn on your anti-skid switch. Turn your uh, lights to taxi. And um, now we're ready to uh, get our MFDs fired up. And we're going to set this one on the right to a CDU repeater. It's showing us what we have down here on the CDU. You notice the, the T uh, is climbing up. That is the timer. That's a, a, the system time to alignment. And uh, we'll look at that again here in just a second. On the TAD, um, we'll wait until everything is aligned and uh, we'll enter our network codes in. Uh, on the servers that I fly on, our network for the A10s is 2.5. And let's say for today's uh, mission, my ID is 1.1. One, one. We also use lot ATC. When you're using lot ATC, you want to use your transponder over here. So I'm going to set my transponder to the same thing that I would set my network. 2511. You turn on the IFF uh, for the transponder. And then right up above this, we go to the uh, master control for that. We turn it to normal. That way on lot ATC, I'm showing up as who I'm supposed to be. We need to set our radios and turn them on. That's usually something else that is done immediately upon startup so that we can check in with other people that are in our flight. Okay, so we've got the transponders on. Uh, SAS and ground trim has been taken care of. Um, both engines first pulled up. We get a good start on both engines. They both stabilized. We don't need auxiliary power anymore. So I'm going to turn off the APU generator, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn off my APU. You notice that it kind of quieted down because we got rid of that extra motor running. Um, check your fuel. You're going to see what that is when you uh, arm yourself anyway. Uh, but make sure that it goes up and registers that it's uh, reading correctly and switches on. Uh, we need to turn PTO2, which is out here on the wing, turn it on. It's not going to burn up uh, like it tells you, but that's okay. Um, now when we look over here at our CDU repeater, it says INS nav ready. So the inertial navigation system has aligned itself with the CDU. That occurs at 4.00.8. And what we need to do to move past this point is we want to hit nav on there. And then we want to click on the Iggy, uh, the embedded GPS INS. And I'll also go over and I set this to steer point rather than TACAN or ILS. Now if you look down, the only light that we have left is our EAC. And if you come right over here, there's a switch for your radar altimeter. You want it on, and then your EAC will lock into place as long as your IGGY is uh, turned on. 
and you'll also see that your TVV is correct now. Then we're going to go to Function, Waypoint, Waypoint, and that's what I want to be looking at. Now on the TAD, if you recall, I said that our, my network is 25 for A10s, and my ID is 11. So I've set my group ID to 25, my own ID to 11. This is so that I'm on the saddle system uh, to data link between the other A10s. We have the transponder that's showing uh, lot ATC, who I am and where I'm at, and also that I'm uh, squawking normal, I'm not on emergency, and uh, they're both set up to the same thing. So 2511 for me today. And I'm uh, going to turn my Hemix on and look around, yeah, my Hemix works. Uh, a quick trick about your Hemix. When you're looking at it, coolie hat down short makes it soy. If I want to take some brightness away from it, DMS down. If I want to enhance the brightness of it, DMS up. Also, a quick one inside your stat menu, if you go up to the top OSB where it has HMCS, you click on that and you notice that day is now showing 100%. If I DMS down, I'm clicking down through it, DMS up is increasing the intensity of it. If it's nighttime, I want to switch it to nighttime. But since it's daytime, we want to be able to see it. And we're going to go to the targeting pod, turn our targeting pod on, and let it start warming up, and go back to CDU. The only thing that we don't have now in order to get us up in the air and uh, fighting, fighting bad guys is uh, we're going to turn our countermeasures on. I usually set it to semi and uh, set all four switches to on. Uh, now, over here on the uh, Dismas, if you look at it, you notice I've got a red box. The red box is indicating um, my TGP, my targeting pod. But we need some weapons to go with it. And um, we're in an uncontrolled airspace, and we don't have to use, uh, we don't have to get permission to do our startup like you do in uh, uh, the DCS tutorials. But we're going to get the ground control, or the ground crew rather, uh, on the radio. And we're going to tell them we want to rearm and refuel. And if you notice, this had uh, a lowered fuel state. Uh, the reason for that was set up that way in this mission. Let's just add something simple. We're going to add. Uh, three triple racks of uh, AGM-65H Hotel Mavericks and let's set um, two GBU-12 bombs. Now, in the majority of the servers you will need to have your canopy open before you ask your crew chief uh, to arm your uh, aircraft. Request rearming. Copy. Okay, he heard us, and that's because uh, we've got that up. If you are using simple comms and you're talking to um, the MDCS uh, ATC to request taxi, etc., and you notice that these uh, things up here in the upper right, where it's showing ATC ground crew. You may notice that they're grayed out. When they're grayed out, and you can't figure out what's going on. Rearming complete. And what you did to make that happen. Anytime that you have talked to the ground crew who is out here with a headset plugged into the side of your aircraft, if you look right over here, this knob has gone to intercom because you were using the intercom to talk to them. Switch it back to VHF you'll get these back to white and you won't have the grayed out ones like they're showing for a lot of people after they do that and they don't understand why it's like that. Okay, I'm going to close 
the uh, canopy real quick and we've got red boxes showing on our dismiss page and we also have a message telling us uh, that the dismiss inventory is combat so what we need to do is we need to load that into the dismiss click load load dismiss notice that's the only asterisk showing right now now we have all four asterisks showing when we go back to the dismiss page now we have populated those because it's added them into the system that's important uh, anytime I come back here and rearm at, at any point during the mission um, when I rearm those boxes will return to red states and uh, I need to go back to load and reload my dismiss or you can go back and you can reload everything and then let the whole DTS uh, load again but this is pretty simple that way and so we've got our network set up we've got our transponder set up uh, we have our radios on and set up CDU repeater is on and set up targeting pod is on we can hit air to ground and make it go air to ground and we're going to look at uh, the control page on it and we're going to switch this to MGRS we'll talk about that in another tutorial and we want to look at our laser code we're using the default for right now we would have our assigned laser code that we would enter right here let's say our laser code is 1686 and when we click the OSB next to it, you notice it changes. And so now we have that set. And when we do our weapons profile setup, that's the laser code we'll be using is 1686. Everything is up and running. Uh, if we had an ILS that we needed to put in or attack in frequency we needed to put in, we could also do that now. The other thing that occurs on the ground is your little pinky switch that's out on the end of your uh, throttle on your left hand pinky when you pull it back on the ground taxiing you want your position to be flashing and you want your anti-collision to be on uh, when you get to your hold point for the runway uh, your position will go to steady um, and then when you fence in before you reach your AO your pinky switch on the outside when you move that you notice it clicked them both to off but uh, when you're on the ground like I said when we're taxiing we want that uh, flashing and we want our anti-collision on so there we have it you have a cold start to a hot running A-10 and all of our systems are working. If you have any questions about this uh, or about the way that I do my ramp start, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe, we'll be doing more of these in the future uh, and we're going to be doing them on a mission here in the Persian Gulf map. Uh, happy hunting out there i hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on the next one this is west point checking out